Just to continue the discussion about the NDAF, and maybe it will take much more, <laughs> but I have to leave, uh, we have, I have a taxi in uh, 15 minutes. So the first topic is about MBUF pool handlers, so it's kind of engine of the mempool. Uh, Shreyan talked about it already, um, because uh, the hardware assisted uh, pools are coming, uh, they already use it. The API is there uh, uh, since uh, 1607. But we, we agree that there is still something missing. Uh, the, 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 the default uh, ampoule handler is uh, the ring, it's still the ring, and there is no MBUF, le, API, uh, MBUF level API uh, to change the default uh, handler. So we have to discuss if uh, this has to be a new parameter to PKT MBUF pool uh, create, or if it has to be a sort of EL argument uh, uh, that can be passed to every application, so this will avoid to, uh, uh, to add a new command line arg argument to every application examples or every application in the world. Um, and Last question, uh, what I'm wondering is when you have a hardware mempool handler, uh, does it mean that uh, if you have another device, it may not work with some devices? I mean, if you may have constraints when you use a, a hardware mempool handler, and I don't know if we have to uh, set up a sort of a negotiation, uh, uh, an API that say, okay, I have uh, all this uh, handler available, and the application or is all the user say, okay, I want to use this one because of uh, I have a one core and I know this one is more efficient with one core, or I have this kind of device and I know that uh, mempool handler does not work with this device. So this kind of discussion we, we should have. And another subtopic about mempool uh, handlers. So uh, um, David uh, did uh, another software handler which called Stack Handler. So one drawback of the ring handler is it's a ring, it's a FIFO. And when you are using a pipeline model, uh, the core that allocates the MBUF it's not, is not the core that will free the MBUF. It means that if you have a large number of MBUF, let's say uh, uh, a lot of memory, so you have one million MBUF, one core allocates, so it copies the cache, and the other uh, deallocates. Even if you are using only uh, 1,000 uh, MBUF among the 1 million, you will use uh, all the 1 million MBUF and it will create cache evictions. So there is already a stack handler, but what I would like to know if some people have ideas or plans uh, to add uh, uh, let's say more optimized stack and log, which could be log less or yeah. So if you, uh, I know Bruce will not say something. <laughs> Bruce nearly always wants to say something. Um, to your first, to your previous slide, um, the default mempool handlers. First comment is yeah, I think we absolutely need an API to set the default one. And I suspect, or I need to try to work out, do we need also a build time option for different platforms to set it? Perhaps for different yes, architectures or different SOCs? The other thought I have is if we add the API, that hopefully should allow us to have things like bus drivers to set the mempool handlers depending on the results of bus scans. And would that be useful for SOC type devices that have? The possibility of hardware handlers so that whenever a, a bus scan or whatever sort of hardware scans take place, it sees, oh wait, we've got this hardware handler, let's now call the API to change the default device. So they're my initial thoughts on it. It's also a case that uh, having a better pool handler would help with the Hyper-V situation because we receive into a granted 16 meg area and we'd like to be able to just make the MBUFs point to that. But at some point you're going to get the situation where 
um, especially if you have deep pipelines, that that's exhausted and you then have to start copying back to an alternate pool. And I think that some of the hardware SOC guys all have the same problem that you, re you, you get, when you have an arbitrary fixed size pool, somebody will build an application with more than that data in flight and then you've got to... <laughs> So uh, just to add to you, yeah, it does make sense to have the API. Of course, it does make sense that uh, such a selection is made at the burst time, or the prediction of the device time. Uh, the problem, the, the problem that was highlighted by uh, right now is the key problem. How do we define whether uh, a given pool will suffice your needs? That is that is all application driven. So essentially, until unless we expose everything to the application, it will never suffice the use cases that we are focusing on. Okay, so we will continue this discussion on the mailing list, but Ament uh, from NXP uh, already uh, proposed something and I have also RFC uh, on this topic. Uh, next topic is just an idea, There's, I have no implementation for that, but I want to discuss um, MBUF that carries, that points to data uh, which is not embedded in MBUF. So, let's say uh, you are implementing a sort of web server. So you map uh, a file uh, or a list of files uh, in your memory, which is locked, and you want to send this data. Today, your only, only option is to copy the data inside the MBUF and send it. And I, what I think it could be useful is to have an MBUF that references external data that you can send. And I know this is something that is already done uh, by Vhost application, but uh, I think uh, some some things are, are missing to, 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 to do this properly. Um, so the, the constraints we have is we have to know the physical address because uh, it is used by the by the physical drivers. Uh, the memory should of course be non-swappable, and it should be physically contiguous. Um, we have to know uh, that uh, when the memory is not used, this is uh, the, the thing that is, uh, that is missing today, to have a callback when the MBUF is transmitted, uh, so that the application can free or reference count the, uh, the, this external memory. So this is uh, how it would like to, uh, how it would look like. So you have the, the MBUF with maybe another flag saying, I carry uh, external data, so I have no data embedded in the MBUF, so it's quite like indirect MBUF, but instead of referencing another MBUF, it references a data buffer, and we have to add two arguments, uh, a callback pointer, and maybe an opaque pointer uh, that will be given to the callback which, to store the metadata here, to reference count uh, uh, the, the data buffer, but this will be opaque to the MBUF layer and managed by the by the application. Bruce? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. First of all, on the what exactly we're trying to achieve here. For a start, I thought we already had some support for this already that we could take external memory and point an MBUF to it. And there's now, I remember at least discussion about it. It may not have gone in where there's a flag to say this is actually an indirect MBOF, so called the chain MBOF free, but we can support having non MBOF external data as well, right? So, what we have today is this. But do we not have the other version as well where we don't call the chain free? I thought we needed that for some. Did that not go in? Okay. The other question I have then is about the need for the callback on free. Whenever we've got an external buffer, being pointed to by an MBOF, is that not permanently tied to that MBOF? So you want, or are you thinking the case where you free the MBOF, you then detach that external data buffer completely from the MBOF, and whenever that MBOF gets allocated again, you now have to go find another external buffer, a different one, and attach it to it. Because that would seem to be what's implied by your chaining the free. So could you maybe go into what you're looking for there a little bit more? But it, w when you send this MBUF, or maybe you constant you want to... Well, yeah, sorry. At first I think it would be 
really useful, uh, at least can think about the things when we need it really, probably with three. But yeah, anyway, uh, I agree with Bruce on the point that callback would, on every buffer, would mean skill performance, right? So, uh, my thought on that, I don't know how useful it would be, but could we have a special main pool that would have only this kind of attached to external buffers uh, and buffs only? And then basically this mempool would probably run without cache and whenever you call mbuff free, it would know inside how to deal with that, right? So you don't have to do this via callbacks, you can still can kind of probably accommodate a bunch of these mbuffs and then invoke free for a bunch of them in one go and then the, yeah, inside, basically this ability to customize, have custom mempools, right? You, yeah. You mean a sort of uh, when you um, put back the bulk of, of objects of mem uh, members inside the common pool, call all the. Yeah. No, basically, make the callback be for pool rather than for mbuff. Yes, but uh, this, this is possible, but the, the problem is uh, as you have a cache, if you free mbuff and then you allocate it, it's from the cache. So you won't call the... the yeah. Well, that's the question. Why would you need that? I mean, why... why when I think of an mbuff pool using external buffers, I think where you get a set of external buffers and you attach an mbuff header from an mbuff pool, each mbuff header points to one data buffer. So as the data buffers get allocated and freed, uh, or the mbuffs get allocated and freed, they keep the same data buffer, all the way through that life. No, not so, necessarily. Well, okay, well, what's the use case that's different to that, and how does that work, or how would you see that working? That means that you need to, you know, de attach and detach different data buffers to the same MBOF at different points through the MBOF lifecycle. For instance, that's the clarification I was looking for. I can understand the application. So the application is you have use case. You have one application owning a huge amount of data. You want to, you want the DT, DT, you want your stack to push out those data via UDP, TCP, whatever. So you set up a bunch of, of these MBUFs with data pointing to the other applications, well, whatever, web page or whatever, the data. You put up an MBUF in front of them with, with the appropriate headers. And then you push this through, and the data part is still owned by the original application containing the web page, for instance. So it's not owned by the DPK. Okay. That's, that's the application. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's another topic, but I have to leave now in one minute or what. <laughs> so, uh, just to see, I think we, can, uh, we could uh, enhance the, the, the API, we have some ideas, we have already some discussion about the TX prep API, so maybe we'll continue the discussion on the mailing list, but just for you to know, I think we, we could improve this, and, and also this one, so uh, we have a packet type on, uh, on RX, and we have some length in TX, we could also think about, maybe it's a, it's a bad idea, but we could try to think about unifying this, uh, because lens could also be useful in Rx. Um, no. uh, yeah, sorry, just, uh, <laughs> I know that you have to run here. Yeah, just one more thing that is probably a wrong time, but what I'm, thi I'm thinking it should be, uh, in addition to TXPREP, introduce a new function that would do transmission for, say, bulk of packets. You would say, have a bulk of packets with 16, and you know for each of them, the TX, the uh, float flux would be exactly the same, you know? So it, I suppose it would, can speed up applications quite a lot, so basically, yeah. yeah. New uh, addition to transmit API, I would call it that way, yeah. Could be a good idea. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. So thank you, everyone.